available after today for others to view. So um, after we do the moderated portion, we will have questions and answers, and then we're going to move into small group networking. So we're going to have the opportunity for you guys um, to chat. And it looks like if we stay this small, we might be able to just open it up to a whole group discussion instead of going into the small group. Um, the faculty is here um, in case you do have any questions that are program or academic related, they'd be happy to answer those as well. Um, and I have myself and Jenna Figaro here from um, Career and Professional Development Services, so we can answer um, a different variety of questions. So overall, a nice well-rounded group. I'm really excited um, to get started and dive right in. So with that being said, um, we are going to actually show each question on a slide so I don't have to read it so many times. Um, and then you'll see the panelist who's going to answer that question um, come up as well. So just give me one moment here to switch presentations. And Sarah Rumball is getting put on the spot here. <laughs> All right, Sarah, go ahead and take it away. Um, please introduce yourself and briefly describe your educational and professional background. Hi, everyone. Uh, like Beverly said, my name is Sarah. I'm actually out here locally in Los Angeles as well. Um, and I graduated from ASU in 2014 with dual degrees in communication and sociology. So since then, I've actually spent all six years of my career in the recruiting and talent space, um, which initially, and I'll dig further into this later, wasn't something that I'd actually planned on doing, but it's something that I've loved and, and found extremely rewarding. Um, for the first two years out of school, I actually worked for a recruiting agency, which um, for those of you who aren't familiar, it's, it's sort of like uh, an extension of a company's HR department for companies who can't hire internally themselves or might not have the capacity, they can outsource that to a recruiting agency like the one medics that I worked at. So I was there for about two years and that combines a blend of not just finding candidates and recruiting them, but also managing those relationships with those companies that you're recruiting for. Um, and then moved out to Los Angeles two years after that and started um, working at a financial technology startup here um, as head of recruiting. So in that role, I oversaw all of our hiring process and then also all of our talent programs. So everything from culture and engagement to onboarding to our employer brand and marketing strategy. So at a startup, you get to wear a lot of hats, which was which was really fun. Um, and then most recently, uh, the past year and a half, I was working at Bird, um, which is a, another startup uh, in the e-scooter space here in Los Angeles. So was a senior recruiter on that team and, and helped scale when they were growing from a couple hundred to over a thousand employees. So uh, very, very fast paced and super rewarding experience as well. And that's my, that's my uh, career so far to date. Thank you, Sarah. So then we'll have the same question answered by Julian, please. So hi everyone, my name is Julian Allen. Um, I graduated from Arizona State University December 2013 with a Bachelor of Science in Communication. Um, I primarily work now in public relations, uh, specifically in entertainment public relations. Um, so that is pretty much everything you see on TV and in film. Um, I probably had some hand in, in working around in that area. Um, right after school for two years, I worked in um, brand marketing specifically with like promo models and brand ambassadors. I managed a team of them with the Phoenix New Times um, in Arizona. So, and then I left and came to LA to chase that goal of being in entertainment and working in entertainment PR. Um, most recently I was working at Sunshine Sex, which is a big um, bi-coastal agency um, with a lot of A-list talent, a lot of those big marquee um, award shows that you might know. My photo is me at the Golden Globes. Um, and right now I'm actually working at an agency called Image Elevators, which is more of a um, marketing public relations agency. Um, and I'm dealing with a different kind of client set there, but still mostly working in the entertainment space. Thank you, Julian, appreciate it. All right, Zach. Uh, okay, Sarah Morales, you are last but definitely not least. Hi everyone, um, I'm Sarah Morales. I 
received my bachelor's of arts degree in psychology and minor in sociology um, and recently have been admitted to the master's program for forensic psychology at ASU starting in the fall. Um, I have for the past eight years, I've worked in child welfare. That's where my kind of career path took me. And um, I have started out in working in foster care licensing and have pretty much worked in every position possible within the child welfare realm. Um, and I worked as an ongoing caseworker in Denver, Colorado. I moved up there in um, 2013 and um, kind of really made my professional um, foundation up there in child welfare and moved back to Arizona in um, actually in March of 2020. And I currently work for the Supreme Court and work facilitating foster care review boards. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you, everybody. So yes, we can see already there's quite the spread of different uh, occupations that are available to you. All right, so we're moving on here to the second question. And we're gonna start with Julian. Like I said, these are kind of like randomly ordered, so you'll be mixing it up a little bit. Um, but could you please describe your current or most current position and how your education helped you prepare for it? So dive in a little bit um, deeper into those details. Yeah, um, so I'm currently um, an account executive at Image Elevators. Um, like I said, it's a boutique marketing public relations agency. Um, I'm responsible for leading the work um, and of all the accounts that I oversee. So I determine strategies. I also do um, anything client facing. So that's all of the reporting as well as any of the onboarding. Um, and then I'm also on the back end of things doing, um, you know, doing the work, um, reaching out to press and media um, about the different initiatives that each of my clients are working on. Um, but at this specific agency, I've been challenged because I'm working on a set of clients that I don't really have that much experience working in prior. Um, like I said, I was mostly working in entertainment and now I'm working with like government agencies and legal analysts. Um, so that's been fun and also um, challenging, but in a good way. Um, when I was in school, I, um, I mean, I, I was doing every, it felt like all of my priorities were about the different organizations that were on campus. I was very socially involved and that's where I, I learned a lot of my soft skills that have helped me in my career. Specifically when I was in class, I learned about um, how to analyze information and, and take from it what I needed. Um, and I also learned how to be resourceful is probably the biggest thing that's helped me in my career. Um, like I said, in my current position, I'm dealing with clients that I haven't really done a lot of work with before. Um, but when I was in school, I ended up having to do a lot a lot a lot of research um, and that was fun <laughs> and it taught me the good things um, and and it taught me how to be um, disciplined so that has really been something that I've been able to apply to my career today awesome thank you all right same question for Sarah Rumble. So most recently, like I mentioned, I was working at Bird as a senior recruiter. So what I will say with that, especially when you are working for a startup, there's a lot that does go into recruiting outside of what you might typically think of. Like, yes, you're interviewing candidates and you're managing relationships with hiring managers. And I almost sort of like to think of it as a matchmaker where you're kind of trying to find that perfect blend between a role opportunity for a candidate that's also really gonna make a lasting impact on the business to help drive it forward. So the role itself is really rewarding, but there's a ton that goes into it outside of what you might think of in a typical day. Um, you know, it's everything from helping manage different programs to try tracking hiring metrics and helping forecast growth plans. So um, it's very, very diverse. And it's funny because I think if you ask anyone who works in recruiting to describe a typical day, it's going to be very varied because every single day is so different with the types of folks that you're interacting with from candidates to hiring managers to other people in the business. Um, but with my background, having studied sociology and social sciences, 
I actually think it's something that I utilize every single day. Like a lot of the lessons that I learned from my career uh, in, or from my education into my career. Um, one thing that I will say like goes without saying that because you're interacting with so many different types of people in sociology, obviously you're learning about all different types of backgrounds and how to interact and uh, collaborate with different types of folks, which is, is really rewarding. Um, some of the other things that I will say that really stand out, um, one big thing, even like critical thinking and problem solving um, in all the social sciences programs, I think that there's a, a focus on that and you learn to ask the tough questions of why is this happening you know does it align with what we predicted and especially working in recruiting when every day is so different um, having to problem solve on the fly and, and think through different situations is super important um, and then goes without saying communication skills um, you know both in my communications degree and in sociology you're learning how to tailor your approach and communicate with different audiences which is super super important regardless of what career path you choose to go down is knowing how to effectively communicate with different different people. Um, and then a final one that I'll touch on that probably might not be as obvious to some people is really like the data analysis piece. Um, you know, there's a variety of different projects that I worked on for my sociology degree where you're having to analyze data and actually use that to back up your findings, which I think it's obvious to any of us in, in your career that you can't just come you know, to a meeting with an executive and not really have the metrics or the data to back up your arguments. Um, it's really powerful to be able to understand the numbers and really what that data means and explain that to people. So that's something that has also been really beneficial that I take with me from my education into my, my day to day. So true. Great point, Sarah. Thank you. Rick. Yeah. Um, so my current position is I'm a program specialist at the Arizona Supreme Court. Um, facilitating foster care review boards, um, but I will also talk about my previous position because I think it also is very helpful to know where I've been and how I got to where I am now. Um, prior, I was working um, as a case consultant for a guardian ad litem law firm for about four years um, and really primarily working with child welfare cases, um, juvenile delinquency cases, and um, really being involved with the court system of child welfare. Um, I no longer was a part of the caseworker side where I was, you know, um, actively going out and placing children and, um, you know, doing those types of things. It was now on the other side of the table. Um, and I think my educational background in psychology and sociology really has been able to um, make me successful and set those foundations because, um, you know, you're kind of thrown into very stressful situations where you have to rely back on your critical thinking skills in order to make sound decisions. Um, and also your communication skills need to be very, very well, especially when you find yourself in possible um, volatile situations and how to de-escalate. Um, and those courses that you take with in psychology and sociology, um, learning how to communicate with others, um, and also a big part of it is interviewing others as well and getting those mo motivational interviewing skills. Um, you know, you are constantly talking with people to the point where when you get home, you don't want to talk to anyone. Um, but I think it's been a very good foundation and um, has set me on a great career path. And, um, you know, another big part of now being a program specialist facilitating foster care review boards, I have to put all this knowledge together um, because they're citizen led review boards and, you know, citizens aren't going to have the knowledge base that I have of the legal systems, um, the child welfare systems, you know, what costs is due and um, being able to help educate others to help them understand and make informed decisions about their recommendations about what they think should happen in the case. Um, I also have to then compile everything everyone is saying and put it in this nice pretty report to um, the judges so they can see that. And so um, having those courses in psychology and sociology um, and really also helps understand the kind of words that need to be used within those reports. Um, so it's been very, very helpful. Um, let's see. And I just think that the biggest part of it, and I know Sarah touched on this as well, is just those critical thinking skills and decision making skills that um, you start developing really well in those coursework. So, yeah. Thank you, Sarah. All right. So 
Um, moving on to the next question, which now that I'm reading it out loud in front of everybody is a little bit similar. Um, but Julianne, if you could touch a little bit on the experiences that you had in college and then all of your prior positions, right, leading up to your current position, what do you feel like has helped prepare you for your current or your most complex work that you've done? Yeah, um, so I, um, I mentioned this before, but in school I was, as much as I was trying to stay focused in the classroom, I was also um, trying to learn as much as I could outside of the classroom and be a part of the entire ASU experience, which we all know is like very well-rounded. There's a lot of um, spirit that happens there, but I, I learned and thrived in those kind of social places, um, which has brought me to my current career being a publicist. But um, so I, I learned a lot in the organizations that I was involved in um, and I, because I was being let into those leadership positions um, that really taught me those interpersonal skills. It taught me how to build relationships. It taught me how to maintain relationships. And then it really taught me how to network, um, which I did my one internship in college, which I got through a networking opportunity from those social um, experiences that I was going through in college. So um, I did my internship at um, Marie Claire in, uh, in New York, Marie Claire Magazine. And I was, um, it wasn't like the devil's work, devil work Prada, it wasn't that kind of thing for, for me at least. Um, but um, as you can imagine, it was very fast paced and asked a lot of me. Um, and admittedly, I did not know much about fashion when I went to that magazine, but I definitely came out learning a lot about fashion and how a magazine works. Um, but it was in that, uh, that, in that time that I first met a publicist. Um, and that's what inspired me to kind of chase that as a career. Um, I think probably having all of those experiences and learning how to network and just build relationships is probably what's helped me the most um, for my current position. And I think, as I guess since we're talking like the most complex role, um, learning how to work in a team is just invaluable. And just because you have worked in a team setting before doesn't mean that you are excellent at it. Um, it's always a learning thing for me and I'm learning how people work um, and why people do certain things and asking, being able to ask that question and be challenged on your own thinking or your own processes is also invaluable. Yeah. Very true. Thank you so much, Julian. All right, Zach, we're coming back to you. Um, you're gonna answer both these questions in a row, so. <laughs> <laughs> First question um, is the experiences in college and prior positions that help you prepare for your current or most complex. Okay, um, so I would say that as the, um, I definitely learned a lot in the classroom setting from um, uh, from staying organized and learning to kind of prioritize like different tasks that needed to be done. Um, what I also didn't mention in my introduction was that I've actually been with Disney on and off for almost about 10 years now. Um, I started off in the college program in Orlando, stayed on with the company as a campus rep, did, uh, did some more work in the parks when I was in grad school, um, and now made it up to uh, recruitment. Um, so I would say definitely keep an open mind in terms of um, different types of opportunities that come your way um, because there were a lot of leaders that I had throughout my time with Disney who would say, oh, hey, have you ever considered uh, doing this or doing that or taking on this extra project um, or meeting this person? And it was in saying yes to those different opportunities uh, that let me network my way around the company. Um, and I would say also since Disney is such a huge, massive company, relationships are a really big, um, important thing. Um, and one thing that I wish that uh, someone had told me in college was that uh, I would always hear, it's not what you know, it's who you know. What I've learned since is that sometimes it's not who you know, it's um, who knows you. And it was in doing some of those meet and greets that I was able to um, get some of that experience and uh, ask the right questions and um, and get better prepared for the current role that I'm in right now. Oh, sorry, you're on. Uh, Beverly, I think you might be on mute. 
second question is here on the screen there. Um, please describe your current or most current position and how your education helped prepare you for it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so like I mentioned before, um, I help out with the different recruitment processes uh, for our different for our internship programs. Um, so it can be anything from scheduling interviews to assisting with the onboarding to um, doing meet and greets with the interns and the hiring leaders. Um, and actually, uh, over this past summer, I've also learned to uh, take on a variety of new positions as well um, with some of the changes that have come to our team. Um, and I would say that in terms of, um, in terms of education, um, my interpersonal influence class was definitely a um, big influence in that regard, just in terms of being able to interact with people. Um, and I was able to use that experience to kind of give myself a foundation from my master's level classes in organizational leadership, where we learned about how to uh, both manage our subordinates and manage our bosses as well, just in terms of having those different types of conversations. Um, these were experiences that I could have had in undergrad with industrial psychology or organizational psychology, um, but, I'm uh, but I'm happy that I was able to um, experience it at a master's level and get that deeper understanding of it as well. Wonderful, thank you so much. All right, and then hearing from Sarah, same question. Hi, so going back to the experiences that I had in college, one thing that was actually really important to me because the fields of sociology and communication are so broad, which I think is both a blessing, but also if you're not 100% sure what you wanna do yet, it can be kind of overwhelming about all the different career opportunities. It was important for me to get some sort of internship experience to figure out not just what I was good at, but what I enjoyed doing and, and what I didn't enjoy doing. So I had a couple of different internships, actually not technically related in the same field to what I do now, but I still think having those internships, one was actually at a nonprofit in a program management role, and then another was in a PR and, and marketing role. Um, even though they're not related to what I'm doing now in my day to day, it was very valuable in terms of broadening my network, um, getting on the job experience, and also some of the skills that I learned then, I can still translate to my career now. Um, and more importantly, it also taught me that neither of those industries that I was working at were what I personally wanted to apply to immediately after college, which does help you when you're actually starting to apply to jobs, sort of narrow your search. So internship experience, regardless if you end up pursuing a career and what you're interning in, it's super, super valuable to help you learn about what you wanna do. Um, I also, when I was at ESU, all four years I worked at, I think they still call it this, the Sun Devil Fitness Complex, so the, the gym on campus. I was a manager there. So from that perspective, I learned a ton about like leadership, um, having to manage and, and interact with different types of folks, um, club collaboration and, and all of that, of course, is, is really beneficial to me in my career today. Um, and then another experience that I had actually, initially after I graduated, I spent a couple of months living abroad. So I was living in Spain, actually working for like a travel and event company, uh, selling different trips and different excursions, which um, even though I wasn't making a ton of money, I was making enough to really survive and, and be able to, to live abroad, which was really great for me. And then I, I also, from that experience, learned a lot when it comes to interacting with different types of people from all different backgrounds because you're having to sell to people from that are visiting from all over the world these different excursions and again really tailor your communication and, and learn how to win other people over which is beneficial no matter what you decide to pursue as your career. Excellent examples. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, so we're moving on. We've got Sarah Morales up first with, or no, with this one. Did you already answer this question? Uh, I don't think so. No, I haven't. Okay, <laughs> I mixed up the slides on myself. Go ahead, Sarah, thank you. Yeah, um, so I actually kind of zigzagged my way back to ASU. Um, I play college soccer up at a school in Colorado and, um, you know, uh, I was pursuing counseling psychology, going the more therapist route um, and decided I didn't want to do that. And also I ended up, um, tearing my ACL my senior year of college and also 
then after that moved back down to um, Arizona and enrolled into ASU and um, really, really had to take a hard look and fig try and figure out what it is and what direction I wanted to go in because psychology is such a broad degree. You can go in so many different areas. Um, and so I just kept taking classes that were interesting to me because um, I needed to take more credits in order to end up getting my degree from ASU. Um, so I tacked on the minor in sociology and started taking just classes that really sounded interesting to me. And from what I learned with that is that I liked, um, you know, the abnormal child psychology classes and classes that were more geared toward um, trauma and child welfare and uh, I still really wasn't sure if I wanted to pursue anything in child welfare because it sounded really scary um, and very intense. And I decided I was working full time and also going to school full time. And right next door was the Child Crisis Center. And I said, hey, I'll go start volunteering there once a week and see how I like it. And I ended up volunteering there for almost two years. And it was a really great experience and it really gave me the push to say, okay, I want to try this out. I want to see if I can be successful in child welfare. And um, I applied for my first job and having that on my resume really is what allowed them to take the chance on me um, to start working there and gain my kind of, I call it baby worker skills um, and become a friend or a foster care licensing worker and I did that for about a year and I think you know juggling so many things while I was going back to ASU um, to get my map or my bachelor's degree really helped me be more self-disciplined um, and have a goal and not being afraid to explore and take classes that you thought that you would never want to take or you know, trying or volunteering at a place that you think might be a little bit too scary for you. Um, you know, push yourself out of your comfort zone because it may be just the one thing that really is what you find really most interesting and enjoyable. Um, and I think my most complex role now was when I was a caseworker in uh, Denver and I didn't realize how big of the court process was involved in child welfare and did not realize I had to testify a lot. Um, but I found out I loved it. I loved testifying. I loved being up on that podium and answering questions because it was my knowledge base and I felt very comfortable in that. And so I think that was one of the more um, stressful and intense and emotional roles that I've ever had. And it's really pushed me professionally and personally um, out of my comfort zones. So, yeah. I can imagine. My goodness, thank you. Oh, we're staying with you now. Um, yeah. We're just curious to know, did you stay on the career path you imagined? And you actually kind of addressed this a little bit, um, but did you have something in mind when you first started college and veer from it or how did that go for you? I had absolutely no idea. I just wanted to play soccer and get some credits while I was playing so I could play. Um, and I thought maybe about becoming a teacher. Um, I always knew that I liked psychology, but again, I really had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and when uh, soccer was no longer on the table and moving back home, um, it really forced me to try and explore what it was that I wanted to do. And I had no idea that I would end up in child welfare um, for working on nine years now and have experienced the things that I've experienced. And I would have zero regrets about it because it has really shaped who I am and um, has built a lot of great foundations for for my life um, and you know I just really encourage everyone just to explore as much as possible. Excellent thank you. All right we have Sarah Rempel up next same question. Hello again. <laughs> um, so thinking back to when I started college I mean similar to Sarah I actually had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do initially when I when I went to ASU. Um, the reason that I chose to study sociology initially is 
I've always been a huge people person and, and the subject itself just interested me. You know, why people interact and act the way they do in different settings. It was something that I found intriguing to learn about, but I didn't know what that would mean for a career eventually when I did graduate. Um, I went back and forth in my head, I think, between a few different things. There was a period of time when I was thinking about even pursuing social work. And then, you know, I had thought about combining psychology and, uh, you know, becoming a therapist or a counselor. And obviously I, I talked a little bit about my internship. So I was pretty across the board in terms of, um, you know, what I was open to. All that I really knew was that it needed to involve working with people. And recruiting, I mean, broader HR, I think is more traditional, but recruiting specifically as a career path isn't even something that I had really heard about. Um, but um, it's something that initially I sort of fell into and quickly realized how much I loved it and, and how good I was at it, which made it also really rewarding and, and really fun. Um, but what I will say too, like, if you're in school or if you just graduated and you don't know exactly what you want to do, like that's okay. That's, that's very normal. That's part of the reason that I think networking and, and really getting internship experience and even volunteer experience is so important because it can teach you what you like and you know, what you don't like too, which is, which is just as valuable. Um, and one thing that I will say too, actually now having worked in recruiting for some time and getting to interview candidates every day, you know, companies are going to look at, the fact that you have a degree, of course, that's important, but what specifically your, your degree is in, I mean, I speak to all types of different folks that have different types of backgrounds and different degrees, and the ones who are going to get the job are the ones who are able to articulate and explain how their education or how their experiences aligns with the role that they're interested in. So whether that's an internship or uh, work experience or your education, it's about being able to articulate and match that to whatever career path you're interested in, which is one of the great things I would say about sociology and social sciences in general is that it is so broad. So it is very easy to apply that to a variety of different career paths um, when you are starting to look in the job market, which um, I know many of us are now with, with COVID and uh, the, the time that we're, we're under right now as, a, as an economy. <laughs> so true. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Um, Julian's up next. Before he starts answering, though, I want to encourage y'all, if you have questions, so please go ahead and post them in the chat now because um, I do wanna make sure we get to all of the moderated questions because they're really good and this conversation is so great. So if you do have questions, um, please feel free to start posting them. Um, and we'll go on with Julian. Um, how about you, your career path? Is it what you imagined when you started? Um, no, absolutely not. Um, I, uh, you know, I went into college as a business major. I even thinking about, I was sitting here trying to think how to answer this question. I was trying to remember why I chose business and I, I can't come up with a reason. It like doesn't fit me at all. Um, and I really just thought like, that's a career that that's a, you know, a degree that'll get me a job, I think is what I was thinking. Um, and, you know, they do say it's okay if you don't know what you want to do, you'll figure it out, you have advisors, and maybe that's helpful for some people, but for me, that was just terrifying to hear. So if any of you guys feel that way, that's completely understandable. Um, but um, to Sarah Rumble's point, like, go and take those internships, because it was during my internship, I mean, there was a period of time where I thought, okay, I, I'm going to go be a stylist. And so I took an internship at a fashion magazine, Marie Claire, um, because I thought I knew how to like pair a good pair of jeans with a pair of shoes. And I went to that internship and like real, learned real fast that that was not the career path for me. And I didn't want to do fashion and I, I didn't want anything to do with, with it. But during that experience, I also, um, I met a publicist. Um, and she was there and she was uh, representing a model that was at a photo shoot that I was at. And I just thought it was like an aha moment for me. Um, I saw this person that was doing their job so effectively, but to me, what I saw was um, the perfect storm of all the skills that I had learned up to that point. I saw everything that, that I was learning in the classroom, which is the research and the, and the ability to analyze um, and, and problem solve and to all the things I was learning outside of the classroom, which was in those organizations. I saw leadership. Um, I saw interpersonal skills being used. I saw teamwork being used. And I thought, that's, that's me. I can do that. Um, and if I hadn't have gone to that inter internship thinking I wanted to do fashion, I would have never even thought about being a publicist ever, truly. Um, so that was really eye-opening for me in a lot of ways. Um, and then the other thing that I want to say is that even though I had that moment during school, I didn't start um, on this career path until two years after I graduated. Um, it took a while and I, I started off and my first job post-grad was not um, in public relations and that's okay too um, because I learned a lot in that 
in that um, in that job and ultimately it gave me work experience that I was able to apply to my career going forward. But um, so I think it's okay to, if you don't fall into whatever you think you're gonna do right away, like leaving school because it didn't happen for me and I didn't know what I, I was gonna do when I entered school either. <laughs> That's great, thank you, Julian. All right, Zach, same question. Yeah, so I originally started off with, uh, with a crim and psych degree because I thought that I wanted to go into the FBI and become a criminal profiler or a defense attorney in some capacity. Um, and I was thinking, okay, this, uh, this subject matter is like pretty interesting. Um, and then I did my Disney college program my second semester of sophomore year. Um, and I just really enjoyed the chance to interact with all these different types of people and make them happy. And once I got back to ASU, I realized, no, this field is far too depressing for me to stay in in the long term. And I'm going to switch uh, back to psychology or I'm going to bump that up to a major. Um, so my last two years of undergrad, I spent as a campus rep for Disney, uh, just kind of marketing the college program, talking to, uh, talking to ASU students about my experience, uh, letting them know about all the different opportunities that um, awaited them on the program. Um, and it was in that experience that I realized, hey, wait a minute, this is something that I really like. Um, I enjoy being able to talk about my own experiences at a company that uh, not only is renowned worldwide, but that I have professional work experience in. Um, I've, uh, I could probably go ahead and do this for a living. Um, and granted, my very first job out of undergrad was not that, but rather um, teaching English over in Spain, but it was still those uh, little connections that I was making with people. Uh, once my students found out that I used to work for Disney, they were always like, oh, sing Frozen for us. I'm like, not in Spanish. I can only do this in English. Um, but it was that combination of um, talking about something that I really liked combined with all of those uh, like cross-cultural connections that I was able to forge um, and that's kind of what got me thinking, okay, maybe I can um, enhance the skills that I learned in undergrad and apply them to a master's program. Um, so after getting my MBA and, um, and having all those experiences, I was like, okay, I think this is a path that I want to keep pursuing. And I've been in recruitment now for about two years in between Disney and the small study abroad company that I recruited at. And it's been fantastic. I wouldn't change it for the world. I've learned a lot and um, look forward to seeing where it takes me. Great stories, everybody. Thank you so much for sharing them. Okay, so this is our last question. Um, we're gonna start with Sarah Rumble. Um, how, recent events, how have recent events affected your professional life? And do you see any unexpected positives that could arise from current circumstances? So Sarah, you are up first. Good question. Um, so as all of us know, obviously COVID has had an immense impact on communities and, and businesses everywhere. And um, unfortunately, it, it had a pretty tremendous impact on my, my career opportunities as well, because I was actually let go back in April. So uh, my former employer, Bird, like a lot of businesses, had to go through some pretty massive layoffs. And with that, the entire recruiting team was impacted, which was not something any of us had predicted happening. Um, it was my first time ever being laid off and my first time being back in the job market since I had graduated from ASU. So it's definitely a very humbling experience and you know, kind of taking a step back and thinking about the reality of, of you know, what's happening. I think that trying to look at the positives and, and see the good in the situation, it has given me time to really think about what I want next and really what's important to me and, and what I'm looking for and, and you know, my, my next career opportunity. And I will say too, with that, um, blessing in disguise, it's also given me some time to relax, right? And, and really be present and, and have some more time with, with my family and friends. And I think now going into my next opportunity, I'm in final stages right now, interview stages with a few companies. Um, I'm that much more eager and excited for that next move. I've taken this time to really network with other people in recruiting and, and learn about how different talent uh, and, and recruiting professionals have handled the pandemic and you know even the way that they structure the department at different companies that they're working at. So it's been really helpful for me to just learn a little bit about the way that the different companies and, and different folks have been handling it. Um, and what I will say too that 
I realized when I started working in recruiting and then now actually myself being back in the job market, um, if any of you are applying, I'm not sure who right now is, is looking for work, but it is going to be so much more rewarding to be really thoughtful and thorough about where you're applying, even if it means applying to less places, but versus just, you know, mass blindly applying to hundreds of companies instead applying to maybe a few companies, but being really thoughtful and taking the time to tailor your resume to the job description or reach out to the hiring team or people that would be on the team you'd be working on on LinkedIn, because you'd be surprised, you know, how uh, open people are actually to helping. Um, but if you're really thoughtful about where you're applying, even if it does mean applying to slightly less places, it's going to be a lot more beneficial. And that's something that I've learned too through this process. And it's taken me a little while to find those right companies that I was waiting for, but now things are slowly starting to open up. So I'm, I'm feeling good about where I'm at. Thanks for sharing, Sarah. I hope the best for you. I'm glad to hear you're having interviews. Thank you. All right. So same question for Julian. Um, so yeah, this is actually um, something that, that Sarah and I have in common as well is that um, I was prior to my current position, I was working at um, an agency called Sunshine Sachs. And I don't, so, um, I guess I, the way that I could explain it is that we have seen the impact on several millions of people losing their jobs across the nation. Um, and I feel like the media attention has focused in on like the dining um, and, and restaurants and bars as well as like maybe like hospitality, right? Like hotels and such. Um, I work in entertainment and that industry slowed to a screeching halt. Um, and you guys that watch TV probably know all your shows kind of like went bye bye for um, foreseeable future. There's been a lot of people in entertainment that didn't have jobs. My agency scaled down immensely. Um, those marquee events that we do um, went away. Um, and that was a, a lot of our, the, our pay structure. Um, and so because of that, a lot of the people in the entertainment uh, division of our agency were um, laid off and furloughed. And, I, and my, my position was a casualty of that as well. Um, and that was in April as well. So um, being forced back on the job market was terrifying because uh, that's not where I wanted to be. That's not where anybody wanted to be. I like, didn't feel like I was prepared. I went through the whole, um, you know, I felt for a second there I was spiraling. I was like, I don't know what I could do. And I did have that introspective moment where I was like, well, let me think about what's important to me or what I've learned so far. And maybe I want to switch up career paths. And I don't know. I was like, do I make a TikTok and become an influencer? Do I like audition for a reality TV show? Like I, I will like went through it all. So, um, but I was lucky enough to continue to leverage those, all the networking that I had done in my career up to that point um, and, and, and leverage those relationships and pick up the phone and say, Hey, what's going on with you? And, and, and send my resume out there. And, um, and 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 tailor it to the jobs that I was applying for. I was able to get back into the industry that I that I was let go of, and I know that's rare for some people. You know th that doesn't happen for everybody, so I do feel very lucky. Um, but I would say that the positive things that came from that is that I did have that moment about what I wanted to do and what what made sense for me in this moment, um, and then where you know I. I took a look at my long-term career plan too. I was like, well, what does the next ten years look like? Um, and that helped me choose. Uh, where to apply to um, because I wanted to make sure that wherever I did see myself in 10 years that I could do so by working at this um, new place. So um, it did unfortunately happen to me. And I think um, it, the other learning thing is that I, maybe I was too complacent. <laughs> um, you know, you never want to get too comfortable. I never thought it would happen to me and it did. So, um, so just, I, you know, as far as like finances go, or as far as like your living situation goes, just um, just think about how to make sure you, you are as secure as possible um, when you're out there in the job market. Good advice. Well, I'm glad to hear you're back again and back to work. That must have been tough. Okay, Zach, same question for you. The recent events and any unexpected positives that might be coming out of them. Um, so back in March, when the pandemic was officially declared, um, all of us were forced to uh, work remotely, which pretty much the entire nation has been for those of us who can. Um, and then back in April, a substantial number of people um, across campus recruitment were uh, put on for a loan and forced to go away from their role. I was lucky enough to uh, be one of the team members that they kept on. Um, I think it might have been because of a project that I took on. I still haven't figured out exactly why. I'm just uh, counting my lucky stars right now. Um, 
but it's de uh, but like I had mentioned before, I've definitely been uh, having to take on a lot more uh, roles within my department. Uh, like I was never really one to do event planning, but uh, now I'm kind of uh, learning how to do that step by step. So just like planning different um, Zoom events and um, going into graphic design and making everything uh, look nice for all the interns that we have coming in this summer. Um, and I'm learning to support a bunch of different segments of the Walt Disney Company as well. Um, previously, I'd, uh, I had only supported um, the studios and um, television, but now I'm supporting um, like the Direct to Consumer and International brand. So all the interns that we have um, working for um, Disney streaming services and everything that falls under that umbrella. Um, as far as any unexpected positives go, um, I feel like there's definitely something to be said about remote work. Um, I know that remote work had already been um, on the uptick even before COVID, but uh, now that everybody's been forced to work from home, um, I feel like employers are going to be reevaluating what it means to um, let their employers set up in their office, uh, set up in their home office, uh, in their home office if they want to, or if they want to keep coming back into the office and continue that uh, kind of camaraderie. Um, so I feel like there's going to be a huge shift towards uh, working from home, and there might be an, like an even huge um, uptick in work from home furniture and just this huge industry that. Uh, comes from that as well. Good points. Thanks. All right, and we're going to end with Sarah uh, Morales with the same question. Yeah, so um, I kind of right before everything hit um, had just moved to from Denver to Phoenix um, on March 12th and then all of a sudden the world stopped. Um, and luckily I had already secured my job here um, with Arizona Supreme Court and um, and kind of unfortunately, but fortunately, um, child welfare is one of those things that doesn't stop. Um, and no matter what, it's still it's still needed. Uh, workers are still needed in all areas. It just the way that work was being done was changed a little bit and was done more virtually, but still, um, you know, child welfare was still definitely happening. Um, and one of the more positive things about me is I, or not about me, but about taking on this new role with Arizona Supreme Court, it was not a position where I was in the field anymore. Um, I was for the past eight years in the field working all hours of the day. I never knew what it was like to work an eight to five job. Um, and this job is more of that structured eight to five um, kind of hours. and that has really, really forced me to, I guess, calm down because <laughs> I was always on the go and which has been a great thing because I needed to. And in doing that, I was able to really focus on myself as well and really felt that this was a great time for me to pursue my, um, you know, graduate education. And, um, you know, luckily I was admitted and that will, I will be doing that simultaneously while also um, doing my current current role um, and so that has been the positive for me is it's really made more structure in my life and um, allowed me to focus on myself and where I want to go in my career. So. That is wonderful. Thank you guys all for sharing your stories so openly. Um, I love doing these kind of events because honestly I'm learning a lot from you and it's good to hear um, all the different types of experiences that you all had that led you to where you are. And I think that current students or maybe alumni who um, have been affected recently, you know, it's good for them to hear these stories. Um, very encouraging words and good advice and, and just inspiring to hear where y'all came from. So I'm going to um, leave it up to Jenna to let us know how the chat is looking. Perfect. Yeah. So we did have one question come through and feel free any of you to jump in on this. Um, but one of our participants, Debbie, mentioned that she's receiving her BA in inter interdisciplinary studies with two concentrations in media analysis and communication. 
and also a minor in transborder studies. So what advice would you give for a person like her who is looking to get into media? Uh, I can go ahead and start. Um, I would say uh, when it comes to media, don't discount the importance of um, smaller companies as well. Uh, because while there are so many different types of media out there, act, yeah, there's a lot of different types of media out there. Like um, there's TV, there's film, there's online, uh, there's music, there's publishing, the list can go on. Um, so I would say keep your options open. Um, if you have an interest in one or more of those categories, um, then I would say maybe connect with Beverly or someone at ASU's Career Services Department and um, see if they might have any contacts or know of any openings. And if not, um, you can always go on LinkedIn, type in uh, ASU, for example, film media, um, see who pops up and then message them and say, hi, I'm looking to get into media. Uh, do you know, uh, do you know of anybody that I might be able to talk to or do you think you might be able to uh, share some of your career journey? Because if there's uh, one thing that I've learned uh, throughout the past, uh, since leaving college is that people love talking about themselves and sharing their stories and they're much more likely to open up to you if, um, if they feel like you're just trying to get to know them better and figure out how to get there rather than, oh, this person wants a job at my company. I don't really know what to do since there isn't anything open. Um, yeah, I just to add, I would say, um, but to Zach's point, there is a lot of different versions of media out there. Um, and so for that reason, I think you should consume and create uh, the types of media that you're interested in. And by consume, I mean, literally, like, you know, read the magazines that you're that are speaking to you, watch the type of television that you're speaking to you, listen to the podcast, uh, you know, and research um, different forms of media and then create, I would say, um, I mean, I was working at like my my first PR job and one of the girls came in and she was post-grad and she was interested in being a publicist, but didn't understand that kind of end of the net of, of the industry. And but she had a portfolio of of things that she had written um, and she had written like op eds and she would be, had been maintaining a blog and she had just like done a lot of, um, of copy for social media outlets. And I was like, okay, well girl, you understand media. Like you have an understanding of this. Like you, you're, you're much more qualified than I was when I came to this job because you, you know, you understood it from a different, different perspective. So, um, if, if that is a way for you to, to educate yourself is to kind of create and be a part of it. I, I think that that's a, that's maybe an avenue you can consider. Excellent advice. All right, 